So I get asked this question very regularly, and that is, what is the quickest and easiest way for me to grow my practice? And I, ask, I get asked this by coaching clients, and my first response or my first question back to them would be, what is your sales process? And often people look at me quizzically, and I say, when you think about it, every successful business, every business you think of has a sales process. There's a way that they attract leads, they get those leads interested in their product or service, and then there's a sales process of that product or service where they close the sale. Even in the medical community, because many chiropractors don't wanna use that term sales process because it sounds a little cheesy, you know, we're professionals, we shouldn't be salesy because there's a negative connotation with sales, but essentially when you think about it, even in the medical system, when you go into a medical doctor and you have an exam, that's a discovery process. That's a discovery to see what are the problems that you're having. They may do some testing. There may be some imaging. There's a way that they try to decipher what the underlying cause or what the problem is. And therefore that gives them some sort of metric that they can then come back to you and say, hey, this test was positive. These numbers are out of range and then they will have a sales process. This is what you need to do based on your examination, based on your test results, here are your options, and then you decide as a consumer to make the decision on what you're going to take medically. You know, it may be a medication or it may be a surgery, but it's a process to let you understand the problem, give you some sort of metric, and then you decide which route you're gonna go. Chiropractic is no different. So if we can think of us doing whatever we need to do to attract leads, so that may be anything from online advertising, it may be going out into the community and doing a lunch and learn, it may be doing some sort of a patient appreciation dinner where people bring guests or a community appreciation dinner on a bigger scale, or it may be a screening, or it may be a makeover, or some sort of a patient appreciation day where you invite people in who are, no, or who are not regular patients. And you give them the idea or the interest, you create the interest for them to say, this is something that resonates with me, I'd like to find out more about it. So even online advertising, when you put an ad out there, Unfortunately, many chiropractors go into it thinking that the ad is going to convert that lead. And often, I hear this all the time, is that my last marketing company got me terrible leads or I've done Facebook advertising and I got terrible leads. Well, I believe what we have to think is that every lead is terrible until they go through your sales process. And it's really up to you as the practitioner to say, I need to get good at my sales process. So I need to get good at meeting the patient, creating a level of trust, creating rapport, finding out what their problem is, and finding out not only what their problem is, obviously the underlying cause of that problem, because we are doctors of cause, but how is it affecting their life? And really start asking them questions on really what is this problem stopping you from doing? Because many people can live with pain. But when the pain limits something that they truly value, whether it's a relationship with their family, playing with their children or their grandchildren, stopping them from doing a sport, stopping them from earning an income at work, it's limiting their life in some way. And when we can really truly get to their big why, what is stopping them from doing the thing that they really want to do, then we've got their attention. We've given them a reason to follow through to the next step. And then through our examination process, then we can try to figure out what is the underlying cause. Do they have subluxation? Do they have some sort of a disc bulge or disc herniation? Do they have some sort of a postural change, rotation in their spine, scoliosis, pelvic unleveling, whatever that is, so that we can then go back to them after the examination and say there is a definitive reason why you're having these symptoms. And even more so if we can actually have a way that we can measure that. So whether it's a measuring the angles of the spine, a lateral cervical curve, whether we measure the curve of the scoliosis, perhaps we do a nerve scan or we do bilateral scales, 
or maybe we take a posture picture and we can quantify the differences in shoulder heights or pelvic heights and actually show them that and give them a reason to say, this is why we need to start a course of care to correct these things and use the objective measurements as a means of letting them see that they're then getting better. And then we take the pain equation out of the picture. And it doesn't mean in the patient's mind now that they're getting better because the pain's gone away. And it doesn't mean that they're not getting better because the pain doesn't go away. We eliminate that from the equation and we give them something different to focus on. And that's how you get patients to start to understand the importance and the value of chiropractic and to get them to stick around for the long term. It's creating these metrics and objective measurements that take that pain away. That is absolutely vital for growing a big practice. Hey, on a side note, if you are interested in growing your practice and you want some help or you just want some guidance on that, feel free to click the link below and set up a time to talk to us on the phone. I'd be happy to get on a call with you and talk to you about what your systems look like, how to tweak a few things, how to change a few things so you start getting better results. And if you're interested in marketing and getting to more leads and getting your online presence to a higher level, we can definitely help you do that. Just click the link below. I'll be happy to get on a call with you. Now back to the video. And then when we can get them to the point where we can go over the report of findings with them, and we used to do a doctor's report in a group setting, and in fact, got to the point where this was actually a huge part of our sales process. And the fact we would get people to come to this group doctor's report, and we did it on day three. And the reason we did it on day three, because day one was the examination. We chose not to care for them or treat them per se on, on day one. There were no adjustments given. That would be on day two. We did the day one phone call at the end of day one to let them know that we did find problems in their spine. We did find subluxation and it was worse than what we thought, but the good news was we can correct the subluxation. We have the ability to correct the subluxation, but it will take time. So at least we give them the hope to move to the next step. On day two, we talked to them about the concern and what we'd found on those x-rays. And because there was a significant problem there, we've set up time outside of office hours at our group doctor's report and they should come to see their x-rays during that group doctor's report where we'll talk to them about the process of getting this problem corrected. This is what it's gonna to take to get it corrected because it'll answer all their questions. How long is it gonna take? How much is it gonna cost? What is involved? What do I need to do? Should I do this? And we really wanted to make sure that they had all of their answers before the questions came to their head. So we wanted to manage the objections before the objections came up. And that was the whole idea of the process. But it was a day one, day two, day three. And that was our sales process. And we trained on this and trained on this to the point where we got so good at it that the majority of people that came to that group doctor's report did bring a partner or did bring a spouse. And then that spouse would be so interested in what we were talking about and what their partner's x-rays look like that they would want to get checked themselves. So that built a huge family practice. So that was the sales process. And what we did is we got so good at that and our conversion rates were very high. We were converting at least 75 to 85% of all the people that came to that group doctor's report onto some sort of a care plan. Plus the referrals that they would bring in their spouse or their family as a result. And, and our practice grew like crazy. So what did we do? Well, we just repeated it and it was boring, but it worked. And so we, we got into this repeatable thing that we constantly did. And in fact, we even managed the objection so well that we just decided to say, we're going to add more of these doctor's reports in. So nobody had the opportunity to say, I can't make it. I need to come next week or I can't make next week. I need to come in two weeks. So we didn't do just one doctor's report a week. We actually did three doctor's report a week, doctor's reports a week. And we did them at separate times to make sure that there were all kinds of options. So the majority of people could make at least one of them. And that's really what grew our practice. So it's getting into this repeatable mode that works and just doing it over and over again. And that's what starts to grow a busy practice 
that is sustainable and you grow patients who really understand the principle and they stay for the long term, long after their symptoms, long after their pain has gone away.